Hey there, internet. So today I've spent the last eight hours trying to figure out how to do some basic stuff with the Tang Nano 9K and the GoWin FPGA designer application. So I just want to go through a couple of the things that I learned. So I, we're going to just create a quick project. It's pretty basic and hopefully I can help you understand some of the things that I were just completely difficult for me to get through my thick head. So the first thing that was kind of perplexing is exactly how the pin mappings work. And the reason that this was a problem, well, there was a bunch of reasons that this was a problem, but um, the, 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 these nomenclatures, this IOB 31B, you can actually put that in there. And I guess there's a, some defined somewhere that maps that to an actual pin. So that was one of the first things that was confusing. So when you go in here, you create a new project, you give it a name. Okay. And this is where I got tripped up initially. I, I, these things are indecipherable. The, the Tang Nano 9K is actually this device here. And the way to check it is just to look for the number of LUTs and the number of IO ports. One of the things I did here is I, I, like I picked one of these and it was a completely different number of IOs and none of the pin mappings worked. It kept on throwing all these errors for the pin mappings. So the, the first thing is make sure you get the right device selected. So you pick the device, click finish. Okay. And then you get like this screen here. So the next thing you're going to want to do is add a new file. You want a Verilog file. And then you're going to give it a name. Just call it foo. Okay, and then I'm going to paste in my Verilog. Now, shockingly, Google Gemini is pretty good at programming Verilog. Uh, it's been somewhat helpful for me to do that, but let's just quickly walk through this. One, one point of confusion I still have is the, like the input clock. You'll, you'll see when we go into the, the analyzer, it, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to do what you would expect it to do. But anyway, so we're defining an input for this system clock. We're defining an input for this reset. This is going to be, actually, I should just, this is going to be reset. So that's that's mapped to button the 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 button that's not labeled. It's S1. So that's mapped to button S1. We don't need this. All right, and then we're going to also map an output pin to pin 84 and and we can actually use this to uh to, to make sure this is in fact working. And then, uh, I'm not actually using this right now, but anyway. So, so one of the points of confusion is I noticed that, that in some of the Verilog code that I was, I was looking at, you might have like a output reg and then do this bracket notation to just say, say a 30, 30, 32 bit thing right if you do this it actually creates this as an array I, I I don't actually know why the the go in thing is different but th this is no good um, this will create an array and then it'll actually map this to the ports and then you'll run out of ports and it just doesn't work so uh, you you can't do this syntax in this go in IDE um, so anyway the next thing we have a counter that's 16 bits. Next, we have a flag that just records the previous state of the button. And then so, you know, this is just standard Verilog uh, on the positive edge of the system clock. If this, if the system, if the button's pressed and the previous button uh, state is, is different uh, and this, and the state is, is, negative. So this is pulled up by default. So if this button goes low and the previous state wasn't low, then what we're going to do is we're going to add one to the counter and then we're going to toggle this, this, this is just going to set the opposite bit value. We're going to toggle the output on pin 84 
and then we have to just record the whatever the state of the pin was for the for the clock cycle so every clock cycle this this toggles and so if nothing happens to the button then nothing happens to the previous state if the button goes low and the previous state was high then we go ahead and count one if the button is low and the previous state was also low then we don't need to count so this is pretty straightforward so again we'll save that and then I think the next thing you want to do is synthesize and then you have to go in here to the floor planner and it'll, it'll prompt you. Do you want to have, do you want to create this? You do want to create this. Okay. And then in here in the package view, you got to go down here to IO constraints and then you can drag this to wherever you want to drag it. So, I should probably redo this whole thing because I'm not actually using pin 54. <laughs> uh, what am I using? IOB41A. All right, so is it going to do it? Okay, so you see this little help, you, you get the pin mapping IOB 11A, I want IOB 41A, which is this one. So what we do is we drag this up here, and then that maps us in there to pin 41, and then system clock gets mapped to pin 52, which is over here. And then the system input is mapped to pin four, which we map up here. So you click save on this guy. <laughs> it, 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 it's not a great system. So what, what now what you should have here is you should have this file here. Okay. Now, confusingly, this is called pin 84 and it's mapping to pin 41, but we're just going to ignore that for a second. So, uh, everything else looks correct. So now we've got, uh, this is the actual pin mapping. Okay. So if we place in route, we should actually be able to compile the thing and it compiled. Okay, great. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to click new. You can right click in new. There's a bunch of ways to get to the new thing, but you want to do GAO config file and you want to do light. So this is RTL and light select these guys and give it a name finish. And then we double click on this and we get in this, this weird thing. And in here we gotta, we gotta find the clock. So we just, this is, this is the sampling clock. We're going to map to the system clock. Uh, and then we're going to add the signals that we want. So we want to just, we're just going to go ahead and add everything that in here. Okay. So then we save this and now this isn't really clear to me, but I think you need to rerun everything again. <laughs> Okay. Now, if you try, if you just try to use the, 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 the oscilloscope analyzer from here, it's not going to work. And apparently what you have to do is let's see what version this is. So this is 9.9 .9 beta four. In order to program this thing correctly, you need to use this other version and you can find this, the size speed documentation has this. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. If you go to the size speed wiki and you go into the Tang Nano section, under questions and answers, if you go all the way to the bottom, it says using this programmer application instead of the programmer application installed with, I don't know what that, that that's, is that English? Um, then you can use the GAO. Um, so if you click on that, it takes you over to this tab. You have to download this programmer, which looks like it's 22, 10, 19. And then that's the one I have open here. So if I go to about, we get go in programmer, uh, 1.9.8.07, whatever this build is. And then when you go into USB cable settings, oh my God, hold on. You, you can't have you can't have anything running when you do this. So you do query detect cable. Here we go. You save that, 
And then you're going to have to go in here and you're going to have to find this implementation IMPL directory and then this place and route directory PNR and then in there is this AO underscore zero FS. Now this is like a special bit stream so that it has the uh, it has the soft core and all the smart stuff for the oscilloscope to work. If you just use the, um, there should be another one somewhere. Temp, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's another one that maybe it's this one. You can see the difference in the size. So, but this is the one you want, this AO. So you click on that, then you go ahead and flash it. Okay. So then you have to go up here to tools and then go in analyzer oscilloscope. And then this, this second, the first option doesn't work. The second one, this, I guess it talks right to the FTDI. I don't really know. All right. So you click on that and then you click on this auto mode and then this should be it. So if I click the button, You can see the, the, this is what the button clicked. So you can see the, you can see the sys RSTN value goes low and the pin 84 value goes high. And then I let go of the button, it goes up. The counter is incrementing. So four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay, pin 84 is now toggling. So every time I press pin 84, I'm sorry, every time I press press the button, pin 84 will go to the opposite one. It doesn't matter how long I have the button pressed down. Now, if you want to see the actual bits in here, you can see them. Um, if you, if to, in order to group them, you, you select all these guys and you right click and you hit group. And then if you want to change the type, there's this like format and you can set it to like a unsigned decimal format. So if I press that again, it'll go to 12, 13, 14, 15, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, that, that's how you use the, the go in analyzer oscilloscope application. And there's a bunch of more complicated stuff that you can do with this. The documentation is kind of mostly in Chinese, which I can't really read Chinese. And there doesn't seem to be great, great community support, but I, I, hopefully this helps somebody who's trying to figure out how to use this, this set of tools to do some basic stuff like I was. It took me eight hours to get this far, which is somewhat humiliating and embarrassing, but uh, it is what it is. And um, <laughs> uh, good luck. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, if I screwed anything up or, you know, <laughs> you know of a source of the documentation or you have any advice or you just want to you just want to say hello uh leave a comment down below and uh good luck with uh your fpga and